Mm. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 13. And these you shall detest amongst the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are detestable. The eagle and the bearded vulture and the black vulture, the kite, the falcon of any kind, every raven of any kind, the ostrich, the night hawk, the seagull, the uh, hawk of any kind, the little owl, the cormorant, the short-eared owl, the barn owl, the tawny owl, the carrion vulture, the stork, the heron of any kind, the hoopoe, and the bat. The bat isn't a bird. They're not even diapsids. They're, they're synapses. They're chiropterians. And they don't belong in this at all. And then right after that, it says that all winged insects that go on all fours should be detestable to you. And it says that you can eat locusts and bald locusts and crickets and grasshoppers, but all other winged insects that have four feet are detestable for you. Insects don't have four feet. Well, I guess they do have four feet, and then they also have two more. So, like... The bat thing, you could argue, well, they're flying things, but, like, they couldn't count to six? Like, what's, what's going on with that? Like, that's, that's so weird. Hey, if you're watching this right now and you think that this book is absolutely true and absolutely perfect and infallible in every way, you should call us and talk about it because the show starts right now. Greetings, and welcome to Talk Ethan. I'm your host, Forrest Valkai, and I'm joined today by Jamie the Blind Limey and Jay Mike. We've got a lot of dude in the studio yeah. right now, and it's really exciting. I'm so happy that you're here with us, but before we get started, I gotta let you know that today is August the 27th in the year of our Lord, 2023, uh, and that Talk Heathen, as well as all other shows produced by this uh, this whole network, are product of the Atheist Community of Austin, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to spreading secular, uh, uh, critical thinking, secular humanism, and the separation of religion and government. Um, we are a live call-in show, which means that we have open lines, right now for anybody who wants to talk about their belief, what they believe in, and why they believe in it with three people who probably don't also believe in it. We would love to talk to you, uh, genuinely, and it's going to be a lot of fun if you do call in. Uh, but right before we get started, I got to give you the answer to last week's question of the week. New fun little thing that we do after every show where you can go type in answers in the comments and we might just read them here on the show. Last week's question of the week was... Uh, a headline, a Bible, uh, sorry, a headline made from a Bible story using Florida man. Uh, in the number three spot, uh, we have Florida man gets so high he hears a donkey talk. <laughs> it's a real Bible story, y'all. It's a real Bible story. And remember, Answers in Genesis has a whole page about how that donkey really did talk. They teach kids that. Uh, and then number two, we've got Florida man, after leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, gets high on wife salts. <laughs> Another real Bible story, y'all. A woman's home was burning to the ground and she looked at it and she got turned into a pillar of salt and her family could couldn't even turn around to look at her and grieve. Otherwise, they might be turned into pillars of who knows what spice. Uh, and then we've got number one uh, headline, Florida man gets eaten by a whale, says he plans on staying to avoid the Florida heat. <laughs> we can understand that one. That one's all good. Uh, the prompt for next week, if you want to participate in this, this little adventure, uh, the prompt for next week is, what is biblical advice that could get you arrested? So go down to the comment section, either right now or sometime during the show or after the show or whenever. Tell us what biblical advice could get you arrested, and we might just read it on the show next week. Before we go any further, though, what do you guys think? Well, um, I'll give you a little thing. I'm going to pardon me as I shove my phone into my face. I'm always, yeah. Okay. So uh, Deuteronomy 22, 23, 24. Um, if a man happens to meet a, in town a virgin pledged to be married mm -hmm. and sleeps with her, you shall take both of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The young woman, because she was in a town and did not scream for help. And the man, because he violated another man's wife. You must purge the evil from among you. I'm sorry, ma'am. It was a terribly traumatic experience. But he put his hand over your mouth, so now you have to die. Didn't scream loud enough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for me, um... I don't, well, I think it, it'd be problematic if I went up to like Farmer Fred and I just was like, well, I like your, ca your cattle, I like your ox and your sheep and all the infants in the town, but uh, I've been commanded by God to slaughter all of them. I'm pretty sure that's not going to work in today's society, nor should it be in any society. So, yeah, Farmer Fred, killing your cattle, your ox, and the infants in the community, probably, uh, probably go to jail for that. 
for me, it's got to be uh, Deuteronomy 21, verses 18 through 21. Uh, if a man has a stubborn and rebellious son that will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, uh, and when they have chastened to him, he will not hearken unto him, then you bring them to the elders of the city and say, our son is stubborn and rebellious, he will not obey our voice, he's a glutton and a drunkard, and then all the men of the city shall stone him to death with stones to purge the evil among you. So learn how to be a better parent so you don't have to stone your kid to death because that's what the Bible tells you to do. And I don't want that to happen to anybody. That sounds awful. With that, though, please leave your comments down below. Let us know what Bible verse or what Bible advice would get you arrested. Uh, before we begin, we're, we're, this is the last thing. I want to say that we are actually live in studio today, which is super exciting. We're, we, we, we rarely get to do this. We do this like once a month. It's my favorite kind of thing to do with this show because not only does it mean that we get to be all next to each other and mm. stuff, but it also means that we have a live studio audience today. Take a look at them. Hey. That one's my favorite. Mm. Oh, they're all fantastic. So thank you all for being here live today, and thank you for watching this live, unless you're not watching this live, in which case, just thank you for watching in general. And with that, I think it's about time to get in the calls. What do you guys think? Yes. I think that's a fantastic uh, idea. Sweet. I am liking Kevin in Oregon. Pronouns are he, him. Uh, Mennonite, but trying to destruct, uh, deconstruct, destruct, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> deconstruct his faith, um, but not going well and wants some advice. So Right on. Hello, Kevin. Hello? Hey! Am I actually on the air with you guys? You were yes. actually on the air with us guys. No, this is actually the purgatory not... of the atheist experience. It's not actually <laughs> quite great, no. This is not Forrest, is it? Uh, this is, but that isn't. No. Who's the, who else is there? We got a mic over here. Yeah, uh, my name is Mike. I love... I love you guys. I don't need to take away from anybody, but Forrest is my hero. Oh, well, well thank you so much. That means the world's... He's my hero there. as well, so I will second that notion. And you he guys smells are... quite nice, too. I don't know uh, thank how you can I be so that. happy all the time. <laughs> I don't know how you can be so happy all the time, and I wish I could, and be so patient. I'm just thrilled to be here, you're, man. You're like a good... You're, you're a good Christian. <laughs> <laughs> <Is that t> <laughs> thank you? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so, here, you, want me, you want to hear my thing, or... I would love to. Yeah, yeah um, please. Uh, I'm sorry for talking so much. Um, Not at all. It's a call-in show. I've been a Mennonite. I'm 62. I was, I've been a Mennonite all my life. And, like, not really strict, but kind of. And, you know, I can't get away from hell. It's just driving me nuts. And your guys' usual thing of, well, do you believe in the hell of other religions? Well, no, I don't. And I don't believe in the hell of this religion. But guess what? I've got them neural pathways I talk to your counselors about. Yep. And it's getting really, fr I, I can't shake the hell. God is fucking evil. I, I can't stand it. But then I love God. Maybe God exists. I don't know. I'd like some evidence, like you guys say, but it's really hard to shake this. And I, I'm looking to you guys for advice before and now. And, but, you know, that thing about do you believe the other hells, that's not doing it for me. No, it makes sense. And, it, like, honestly, I... That, that is a good logic uh, uh, thought experiment to try to help you shake off the idea to begin with. But at the end of the day, like you said, you've been believing this for so long. This has been a very present fear for a long time. I have several friends who have, you know, uh, deconstructed their faith and that haven't been religious for a long time. And even like years and years and years down the line, they still, even though they know for sure they have no, they don't believe this at all. They just wake up in the middle of the night like, oh, shit, I'm going to hell. Like, and then it just it hits them weirdly yeah. because yep. that's what trauma does. You are in an abusive relationship, sir, is that you are dealing with the, the after effects of that. Um, I, so, yeah, if if intellectually not knowing or I should say if intellectually knowing that hell isn't real, isn't good enough to get over the hump of the the trigger response, the emotional, the fear response, um, I don't have a tremendous amount of experience of that, but I would say my advice, if I could give some, would be to just remember that any God that would do that is evil. And what you just said a minute ago about how, you know, I guess I, I love him if he's there, but if not, you don't need to do that. You can distance yourself from the relationship, and maybe the more you distance yourself and the more you get away from that and the more you separate yourself from that kind of thinking, uh, not not just about hell, but about you know worshiping this God or thinking this God is any kind of good or any kind of justified, any system like that at all 
is unnecessary and unwarranted and unjustifiable and frankly unforgivable, mm -hmm. maybe that will help you get out of that habit of saying, okay, well, this is justifiable, this is allowed, I love this God, and now even though I don't believe this thing is real, it might still happen, you know? Deconstructing one more part of that might help, but I don't know if maybe you guys have some experience with specifically deconstructing that particular belief. I, I don't, like, so I didn't come out of this background. Uh, I get this question a lot, and I always feel like I'm going to give an inadequate response because it's not something I can pull from my own experience. And it's the only thing that I can really think of, because I've been thinking about this recently, uh, I really enjoy reading, like, New Testament scholarship, um, like, critical scholars um, on the matter. I find it fascinating. And so for the, what I've learned about the development of hell through um, you know the intertestamental period of time before the first books of the, the New Testament or uh, the Pauline epistles up until first century Palestine and beyond, when you see like how it develops, if I, the way that I'm thinking about this, if I was a Christian or if I had these beliefs or if I was a Mennonite, I would look into the history of this. And I think it, for me, I don't know, because I'm so divorced from holding those beliefs, it gave me like an aha moment of like, wow, this is so obviously constructed. You can kind of see how it's developed through time. Um, I can't think of any, I don't know if I should, I don't really have like any specific books off the top of my head or anything I could think of, but I would look at the, the historicity of, of uh, the claims and how they right. develop over time because mm. it might just be this aha moment for you where you see how clearly man-made it is. For me, that was the case. I didn't have such a barrier and such a wall or a hump to get over. So uh, I think you know, you're tethered a lot more to something that I wasn't. So it's really hard for me to say that that might be the best advice. Uh, but it's something if you haven't considered, I would suggest. I'd like to just add, I, uh, if you're if you're you're not a robot, you can't turn those emotions off easily. We're not we're not programmed. We're not we are feeling beings and you just have to deal with it. And that's not really fair on you, unfortunately. But I hope you're kind to yourself. Don't feel guilt if you can't shake it or that you're some kind of lesser or broken person you have been traumatized you've been damaged abused by people pushing I, these I thoughts agree. into your head and uh, please just be kind to yourself i i'm trying to i've developed insomnia recently I, I literally don't sleep for more than weeks at a time thinking about this stuff and I'm sitting here trying to write a letter to my sister, trying to apologize and explain, and she's a devout Christian, and she won't read anything I write her because I mention God. It seems kind of ironic, you know, just like Jesus would do. Oh, you mentioned God? Then I won't talk to you. Well, so, but along those lines of the historicity, I have been doing that some, probably not as much as I should, but I found a really interesting thing that may help some people. Um, I didn't realize this before, but it's very likely that when Jesus was talking about hell, he was talking about a physical burn pit outside of Jerusalem. It was very nasty, and you didn't want to go there. And I don't know for sure if that's true, of course, but you know that that helps me. Uh, Bart, Bart Herman. And, Bart Herman has some some good content. Uh, the origins of Gehenna and the what? That's what the Jewish mm. tradition. Yeah. The origins yeah. of what? I think that's the Gehenna was the the Jewish hell, and that was the pit. It was a cliff. That, you know, but, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That there you go. Sense. Uh, I don't know. I don't ha I, you know, I could talk to literally for hours and try to g get advice and stuff for hours, but I know there's other callers and whatnot. No, you're, you're good. I mean, I want to say one thing is like, I had anxiety, like anxiety of like getting on a, a plane and things like that. And I've, I've looked up like the data and I know like how much more safe it is than me getting in my car. Uh, and you're right. You have, we always have these kind of like irrational, I don't know if you want to call them irrational or rational. We have these fears, even though we know to our best ability, like, I really d shouldn't have this kind of fear. This is that on steroids, mm -hmm. right? Like, you have to realize that <laughs> it is something that has just been like, it, it is, there's a measurement there to, to keep you in line. There's a measurement there to, to guide your actions, right? Should I do this thing? Should I not do this thing? You might have had that in your head uh, under any deliberation that you had, and that is the guiding factor. And now you go through, and I go, well, I need to deliberate between A and B. Well, Hold on. Choosing one of those things was maybe sending me towards a path to hell. I've never looked at it in a way where I've divorced myself from one of those options. Being completely just irrelevant to that because it's just some fabric made up nonsense, right? And so what you can end up, at least what will happen in my opinion over time is that you'll eventually start to like, you choose that thing and you don't have that thought of like, is this going to progress me into hell? Or right? You're not going to have that type of 
fear. Right. And I just think that's so similar to kind of how Four said about relationships. You know, you just wake up one day and you don't think about the person anymore. You wake mm-hmm. up one day and you just notice this difference. And that's the, that's the start. I don't expect that's going to happen, you know, anytime soon for most people. And that's kind of the unfortunate nature because you spent so much time having it ingrained to you. It's, you can't just, you know, stick it in the microwave and out pop, you know, a whole new person. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, a crock pot, right? It has to, has to stew for a very long time. And could you imagine if everyone you loved and trusted told you that planes were dangerous for your whole life, how difficult would it be to shake that thing? Oh, yeah, exactly. Even the yeah. data's yeah. there. I mean, come on. That's, yeah, that's a good point. I never even thought about it like that. As uh, okay. what you were thinking, talking about there, just to kind of the, the hope that eventually things will be... It's a Abraham Lincoln quote that I know. In this sad world of ours, sorrow comes to, uh, to all, and it often comes with bitter ag- agony. Perfect relief is not possible except with time. You cannot now believe that you will ever feel better, but this is not true. You are sure to be happy again. And knowing this, truly believing it, will make you less miserable now. I have enough experience to make are this you- statement. And so like, I kind of see that when you're thinking about like anxiety. and Did you and, read that? So yeah, I can repeat it, absolutely. This is Abraham oh, Lincoln. No. Did you read that, or is that from your memory? No, I'm reading it off the screen right now. <laughs> yes. Honest, honestly, I would not be surprised if Forrest read that from his memory. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard it enough I've to be able to Google it. I've spent it. a weekend with him, and, I've, and I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> But yeah, this this I think about this sometimes whenever I'm dealing with you know anxiety or depression or whatever it may be. Not that this is any kind of mental health advice for anybody else, but like you're talking about you know this lingering you know issue of, of hell in your mind, these uh, this lingering trauma, these these wounds caused by your religious upbringing. Um, just knowing that this is something that other people have worked through and that you will be able to, yeah. even in those moments where it seems like it it won't be possible and that this is something that's going to stick with you forever and that you can't shake in that moment where you can't shake it, know that you will shake it later. And like right now sucks, and that's where you are right now, and that sucks, and it's okay that it sucks. You're allowed to hate it, but in a minute it'll be different, I promise. Um, That has gotten me through a lot in my life, is just like, I'm gonna feel this right now, and I know I will feel something else later. And right now sucks, and it's allowed to suck, and that's okay. Later on it will be different, and that, that gets you through where you are. Yeah, that helps. I will try to do that. Um, it doesn't help in the moment. <laughs> I can tell you yeah, we have, no, we, we have to be I, honest I with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do you have anything else, Kevin, that you want to say before you before you get off? Yeah, just one more thing, if you don't mind, real quick. Um, I so identify with Matt. I'm, I'm like, you know, that's my life. You know, I'm snippy. I have something I got to work on. <laughs> I, I, I'm snippy and short and sarcastic and and I'm so I so identify with Matt in that way and then I so much want to be like Forrest. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> holy cow! I don't know how you do it. You you've uh, so, helped me so much on evolution. I thought I knew about evolution, but I knew nothing about evolution until I started listening to you. Oh, well, thank the you. Way you're so patient and and whatnot. Just keep up being Christ-like. Hey, don't, well, uh, Kevin. Common. I will say. Carve out a space for Kevin, right? I mean, there's so many ways that you can interact with these conversations. Um, I'm somebody that I get really pissed off, um, especially when I do, like, TikTok debates and stuff with people. Some of my friends will know how uh-huh. upset I can get. Um, and I feel you. There's part of me that's like, I want to be, like, more of the forest yeah. or my friend Danny and try to get more on the... Or my buddy Cease, like, trying to get, you know, calm. But it, it's tough. And the one thing I would say is that you keep that in the back, in your your mind, obviously. You don't want to, you know, you want to get upset. And you want to you hear somebody out. But it's warranted right. in a lot of these conversations. There's also, like, there's I'll different. promise you, you'll, you'll, you'll try your hardest. And you'll say, there's no reason I should even be this charitable anymore. So Yeah, yeah. no, there's, there's also, there's different <laughs> personality types and different argument types. Like, it, this show would suck if it was just me. Like we need diversity of of argument styles and of, of talking. Yeah, yeah. I love and, that there. And you should see me get pissed it, off it, if we get oh, somebody yeah. call in defending fascism or slavery. Like I, I'll, I'll be, I won't be happy anymore. I promise you. <laughs> and if you ever feel oh, like man. you need to come vent, get it out, there's safe space to do that. Mm-hmm. Come to the ACA Discord. We're right. friendly. It's cool. You can you can just hash it out. Right. It's groovy. I, you know what? You guys are way more Christ-like than practically all the Christians I've ever met. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Why can't they act more like you guys? I mean, anyways, we are pretty cool. If I'm honest, look at us. <laughs> anyway, thank you so oh, much, Kevin. I really appreciate you calling in and taking the time to talk to us. You're welcome. And just know whatever 
what, what's I don't know. Was it? No, there's some guy that does scams, breaks up scams, and he says, "Just know that you're important and you matter." Love that, oh, yeah. and, and I love that. And same same thing for you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. You too. Very kind of you. All right, all right. Bye. Take care. Keep up the good work. See you later. Thank you. What a lovely gentleman. Do you guys know why the uh, why the Amish girl was excommunicated? Mm. Two Mennonite. <laughs> This is a piece, uh, uh, Hit that like button for more terrible. Do you terrible think that, <laughs> was that a good joke, audience? I don't think. I don't know. <laughs> the audience is silent. Yeah. They don't want to hear any more of that. Uh, before we move like, on, stick to uh, debates and atheism. This is a uh, comedy show here. Uh, we now have a limited edition T-shirt, y'all. Uh, it says "Satan, the Lesser of Two Evils," and you can get them now at uh, tiny.cc/merch/aca. Uh, also, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, turn on notifications. You can become a channel member as well. Click the join button on the video below, uh, right below the video. There, you'll get custom chat emojis. Um, It'll help perpetuate our mission of, of Talk Heathen and the atheist community of Austin as a whole. Uh, if you're in the chat right now, I can't see it, but you should put some of those dope chat emojis out there and let other people see them. And also you can send a super chat with a question or a comment, and we will try to read as many of those as we can as we go along. And with that, who is our next caller, Mike? We're going to go with Chrissy in Kansas. Pronouns are she, her. Uh, was that a... Um, uh, I always... Uh, why am I forgetting how to pronounce this word right now? Mm. Uh Tell me what the word is, and I'll tell you how to pronounce it. Seance? Seance. Seance. I always, I don't know why, I can't pronounce the word. I use $5 words on the show, and I'm like, seance? Yeah. Was that a seance related to her late brother-in-law, and felt very out of place? Okay. Chrissy. And yes, I know what a seance is, I just can't pronounce it. You just can't say it. All right. What's up, Chrissy? So sorry. Oh, oh, you're good. You're just fine. <laughs> I'm just a lightning bolt of just laugh at me, you know, just strike it down. <laughs> doing terribly. Did you use a Weggy board, a Luigi board? <laughs> a Luigi board. No, there was no Luigi board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 I really can't recant it because I was listening to you guys more than I was listening to that. <laughs> well, did it work? Did it? Did it? Yesterday. Did it? Did it um, well, yeah. We'll go into. It. I was going to ask like how convinced everybody was of the of the seance. Um. To to quote his opening, it was a graveyard. Well, I mean, I'm not kidding. Okay. He, said he looked out into a Zoom meeting, and it was a graveyard, and everybody was just. Oh, this was a seance uh, over the internet. I was going to say, did you say Zoom meeting? Wait. Yeah. What? It was a Zoom meeting, and he wouldn't... He Digital wouldn't seance. Everybody raised their hand emojis, and then we all <laughs> communicate with the day. <laughs> uh, I was... I was so... I just... A face palm. Yeah. It was what brought you into this situation where yeah. you were having a, a Teams meeting with a ghost? What, what, what was going on with that? <laughs> My mother in law is in her 60s. He was trying to reach out to my brother in law. He's He passed away re recently from alcoholism. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. So you had a family member looking for another family member over Zoom, and like, what happened? Did it work? Not for her. Um, you have to pay in advance, and apparently he's going to be in the area. You have to pay in October. Of course, of course, you yes, have to pay. in advance. Oh, wait, you used to. Oh, there was a séance yeah. leader, a person yeah. you worked medium. with. Mm -hmm. A yeah. medium. Yeah. I don't know his name. I I don't know his name, and I don't want to advertise. Oh, um, please, no, I understand. I I'm just trying to, I'm putting the pieces of the story together. So a vulture contacted you guys to help reach out to your brother-in-law and, and <laughs> over Zoom. But, I mean, that's, that's the idea. Mm. Um, something like a vulture. Um, that's what they are. It, yeah. Well. Only I shouldn't say, I actually like vultures. Vultures are cool birds. <laughs> Vultures are amazing for us, didn't you? Right. I, sh I shouldn't insult the vultures. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't eat them, though. Don't eat them. No, the Bible says not to. So. Um, it was, it, it was 
that his wife, Mm -hmm. um, her voice, I am able to distinguish between voices pretty well. Um, I don't know if it's a unique trait. I'm not going to claim that it is, but, um, my brother-in-law married somebody from the land down under and, uh, ended up in the alcoholism area and uh he was quote sent back to live with his family because he couldn't seem to stop himself before it got too bad and now they are trying to contact the afterlife to make sure that he's okay Mm. and it scares me that's deeply problematic yeah. for a lot of reasons. And, and when you say it scares you, what what aspect scares you? Are you afraid that they're going to be taken advantage of, or do you do you have a belief in in something supernatural? So what's what's the the parameters of that, that sort of fear? I used to think so. I used to think that I was religious. Um, it was my grandmother that beat it into me. Uh, words, um, but she. My grandmother, um, it's come to light now that maybe she wasn't as honest as she swore up and down she was. Um, so we were, we were raised to think a specific way. Mm. And the first time I shared an atheist video with my sister, funny day, Mike, um, that the first thing she did was, no, 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 that's not right. Um, but at the same time, it's the same God that my grandmother sunk so much of her money into. Uh, your instincts were sharp, obviously. Like, the seance was obviously bunk. Um, but those kinds of supernatural uh, beliefs, can are, they permeate society. and You can't really... Especially if you had it in your family, it's difficult to, to separate them from facts sometimes. Uh, if you want a bit of catharsis, I would recommend looking up things like Barnum statements, hot and cold reading, the techniques of the of the sham medium. Not that there's anything other than sham mediums. Right. But I'm hearing in your voice that as while we have a laugh at how silly it is, this is still a traumatic time. So we're not counsellors, we're not, we're not trained for that, but it's there's no shame or problem in seeking out help if you're feeling overwhelmed or maybe asking your your family to to engage in it as well because losing someone especially to something as sort of bad as alcoholism that's not easy to cope with yeah i I would second that a lot because it's it's something that like when you're dealing with a family that is so engrossed in this even when you are very much separated from it it's hard not to even if you're not intellectually pulled back in you're emotionally pulled back in you're, the, the tradition of it the culture of it the everything that like draws you in this the connection that you have with your family that you want to maintain mm-hmm. that's an attractive force back to this you know predatory pseudoscience so just yeah I, I think that's amazing advice to look up how these things work how mentalists do their tricks how you know how these people uh, uh, get away with this stuff um you know, I, I can't ever recommend uh, the amazing randy enough and the way that he was able to that's tear these yeah, things that's apart yeah mm. that's huge and and you know give yourself the compassion to 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 have your own your own personal space away from that family influence your own way of of kind of getting out of that and and then just Recentering yourself for a minute and just like, okay, I know, I know what I'm thinking and I know what I'm doing, and I'm just to kind of get your emotion out of it for just a minute. Or at least that works for me because I'm a deeply cold and analytical and heartless person. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> See, have, you, have you tried um, talking with them and saying, like, look, I understand, um, given how emotional it is, you, you're looking for really anything and everything that you could possibly do, right, to make this connection that you don't want to admit probably couldn't can't happen again whether you whether you die and there's an afterlife or not right there's going to be this concern of like have you tried to go up to him and kind of approach it like how how jamie kind of said like look i i this is a serious thing i want to value and not just you know say that it's you know quack pseudoscience nonsense i want to show you my my view on why i think that's true by while also treating this with like real big care Mm -hmm. because what i what i 
would hope for them is to look at you and say, look, I care about this just as much as you do, but I'm not going to let some vulture come in and prey on us at our like most vulnerable time that we have, because that's how it works in a lot of self-help areas where you have some genuine people trying to help people. And then these grifters that come in and they want to sell you something when you're at the weakest moment where you're willing to try anything. I'm wondering if you, or have you, I guess, packaged it to him in a way to say, this is such a fragile situation. Maybe we're not thinking clearly and we should look at this from an objective standpoint, see if we should really value this because we owe it to this person that um, we're treating their death with respect and we're not adding more on top of it that's just gonna cause more potential trauma uh, from the results that are not going to come, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering if you tried Jamie's approach, how how far you might be able to get um, get mm -hmm. into. Jay, Mike, can you write that letter for me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even. Uh, <laughs> I, I could try. I could, if you want to email uh, jmike at atheist-community.org, I'd be happy to, uh, to talk back and forth with you and, and give you some ideas. But, yeah, I, I, want, I would want, I want you know, the, you know, you know the, the people in your life, and only you know how uh, it, this is going to work for them. Um, I just suggest, you know, trying to look at this from, uh, at least from them, as going to the, the deepest level you can on their level mm -hmm. so that they're, they're more willing to come for you on the ride of showing that it's pseudoscience and, and nonsense because they're not going to feel like you're, they're, you're coming at them like, oh, this is garbage, right? It, ma it makes it feel like you're taking it seriously to the best of your ability, mm -hmm. but just showing, look, yeah. I care about truth, and this, is, this doesn't hold up to scrutiny. Yeah. And, uh, well, and grief gonna makes. Do oh, when or if you eventually post this, Jay Mike, I'm going to show it to her. How about that? There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, it's, hard, it's hard for all of us to kind of figure out how to, you know, navigate it, but um, it might be one of those things that you can't navigate at all, right? They're yeah. just, their mind's already set to it. But uh, I'm sorry you had to go through it's, that. It's been so hard. It's tough. It has been so hard. That is. Um, that is another consideration I, also if it's it's I, I think what you just said there about how this might not be navigable right at this moment i think it's really important to remember is like what is the goal of trying to deconstruct this for yourself that would be fantastic but what is the goal end of like in bringing the family if at the end of the day they're not going to be able to cope with this in any other way yeah is it better to let them do it you know what i mean because they might not have the coping mechanism that you would have as an atheist to be able to, to rationally handle death and allow yourself the time to grieve rather than looking for an out and looking for a way to, you know, completely get rid of that grief by saying, oh, well, I talked to this guy's ghost and he said this thing. It's like that's, that's a, you know, something that someone would do if they don't have that mechanism. So at the end of the day, you know, I would also consider how worth it is to try to deconstruct with them as opposed to just saying, you know, this doesn't work for me and I'm, I'm going to do my own thing yeah. over here. It's it's all very much worth thinking about because like it would be great to have your family there, but I have certain family members that I just don't talk to about exactly. this stuff because the best case scenario is they're going to be very sad about what I say about their religion. Yeah. So just it's better for me just to continue living on just in harmony in that way, you know? I, I think that's actually really important because um, what I'm saying, you don't want to exclude this idea that this might just might just want to have your hands off on it. It might make it worse. Yeah. And grief makes us all very fragile. So. Oh, yeah. Makes us vulnerable. Yeah. So there's several things to think about there, Christy. Uh, we've we've given you you know a few different uh, different avenues here. I hope you find one that you like. Um, I found the atheist experience. I found you. It took me 18 years, but I finally found it. Um. Thank, well, thank you. We we appreciate. We really appreciate that. We're happy to be here for you. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think you guys are amazing. You make amazing internet. Um, my mouth is dry. I'm gonna start crying. Um, <laughs> why did you do this? <laughs> why did I call? If it makes you feel, um, yeah, I I, I get call. dry mouth every time I do this, so I feel you right now, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <clears throat> my dumb ass didn't my grab job. a, a water when Daryl asked me if you buy. <laughs> If I wanted one. I work in a call center. I just did the thing that I swore I would never do, pick up and call somebody I don't actually know. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, if there was any, if there was ever a time to call three complete strangers and ask them <laughs> deeply personal questions, this was the right time. I wish, um, I wish my kid was up and I wish my husband was awake. But um, tell them we said hello. You yes. are fantastic. I will. I actually will because he, my husband, told me this. Uh, you were going to call soon, so you'll never, never, not, you didn't say the word never. He was like, eh, I know about you and your anxiety because he has the same anxiety. Yeah. Um, he, I love him to death, and um, I had to remove my kid and that mode of thinking from my head in order to even lead a happy life at this point because just, believing that I was going to go somewhere like in a video game I'm going to be playing this afternoon that's that's horrendous that's awful why would I want to believe that I'm going to go there because I'm already going there yeah. <laughs> I have nowhere else to go when I'm gone I'm gone I got nowhere else I, but I want to heal the earth while I'm here because that's what we are here for we can't do it alone we have to do it together and we can't do it with the current divide that exists in our country the way that things are going now it's just going to end in a dead end yeah hatred and division never really seems to work out yeah. but like that's why we have issues of you know, shows like this and communities like this because community and compassion and care are, are you know all that we can do but thank you so much, Chrissy. I really appreciate you calling in. We've got a couple other people on the line we got to get to, but I really appreciate you, you know, trusting us enough to call and open up about all this stuff. It's really kind of you. Thank you. Now, before we move on, uh, we have a couple of announcements. First of all, did you know that you can support this show and all other shows like it on this network on Patreon. Just go to tiny.cc slash Patreon A-T-H, sorry, Patreon T-H, Patreon Talk Heathen. Uh, we also now have a separate channel that houses all of the shows from the ACA in audio podcast form. That's at tiny.cc slash A-E-N podcasts. There they are on the screen. You can also become a part of the Talk Heathen community, just like we were talking about there, community super important, in our fan-run Facebook page at tiny.cc slash FBTHG. And in case you didn't know, Talk Heathen has a TikTok as well. We'll be going live there before the show's on Sunday. So you can go subscribe and join the pre-show on Talk Heathen Live on TikTok. It'd be a super cool thing to do. We also have some super chats already. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie, would you mind run through those with us? Or somebody, which one? I, I, the, the blind limey thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I realized <laughs> immediately after I said it. I did that at lunch the other day, too, and I was like, yeah, I went to this thing, and I was like, check it out, Jimmy, and he's like... <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, my bad. Well, we'll, we'll find a way to make this work. Hold on a second. I can only see this one for now, so it's what I'm going to read. We've got $5 uh, from somebody. Uh, great lineup. I wish I was in Austin. Separation of church and state and little American flag emoji. Hell Yay. yeah. Uh, we've also got Kelly Laughlin, a member of uh, two years. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, $5 here. What do you think is the best ACA show, and why is it the nonprofits? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Disco gang, represent. Hey, Kelly. I miss secular sexuality. Christy Powell is awesome. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we've got, uh, I'm sure, other ones that I will learn how to access in a moment. Until then, uh, I, 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 every day, the, the crew is like, hey, here's your setup, and here's the announcement, and here's the Super Chats. And I'm like, I will find a way to screw it up. Is this thing connected to this uh, thing? I think so. It isn't. No. It Ooh. sure isn't. Uh, we have another caller on the line, though, and that's what we'll do while I figure out how to work technology. Yeah, we're going to go to Bryn in Texas. Hey, uh, hey. Pronouns are he, him, and very recent, last week, atheist, and wants advice on where to go from here. So this will be very cool, an interesting call. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's been crazy. I've been watching y'all show nonstop, and it's led me down a, a, a rabbit hole, and I'm just kind of uh, lost. Well, <laughs> you've gained. It sounds like you found something, right? So you're not completely lost. Uh, why, why don't you give us like a little background on on? what your views were, and like maybe a little synopsis on how you kind of got out of that. Uh, I was raised Lutheran, um, and I've spent quite a bit of time in Methodist and non-denominational churches. At one point, I was a, a youth pastor and um, just slowly kind of fell away due to 
being excommunicated because my dad swore at somebody um, to, um, to to several different things, like me standing up at the Methodist church when they were preaching hate against homosexuals, trying to say they were a sin above all other sins. And I'm like, that's not what the Bible says. It says we've all sinned and we're all equal. So like I had these like contradictions building up over time. And uh, I was sitting in a humanities class two or three years ago. And <laughs> when they talked about how the, the I, I had never heard that there are different, uh, or who was it? Moses' story is copied from another Indian story, I think it is. And it's just, it's been this slow disillusionment of, of all of this stuff. But Dr. I, sorry, I found y'all's stuff on YouTube by mistake. And it's now destroyed my algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I started walking, listening to Dr. Bartram, and um, that essentially just destroyed everything uh, with him going through the fact that the Bible has effectively just been used as a tool by the powerful to whatever. I'm yeah. lost. It's just, it's, it's, um, my faith was built on the fact that the Bible was, uh, or allegedly the Bible was the word of God unadulterated, regardless of what denomination that I attended throughout my entire life. I considered myself a Christian, not a denomination because I was reading what was in the book. And when they started laying it out side by side and it directly contradicted itself and there was extra things added and, you know, the back end of one of the four gospels doesn't even belong to any of this. It's just extra nonsense. And it's like, all of this stuff is hate and his message is love and it just doesn't make sense yep yeah what do you uh, that was so tuesday it has it on here it says <laughs> you want advice on where to go from here like are you, i just feel like sitting sitting in my room listening to atheist debate all these religions might not be the world's healthiest thing well well, no, well maybe not but here, here's here's one thing right where you go from here it kind of is already constitutive of what the, this process entails I mean, think about someone comes up to you with some like NFT crypto scam. You you probably right now have just started sowing the seeds of protecting yourself from these snake oil salesmen, right? So it's not just exclusive um, to the religious aspects. Where you go from here is constructing good epistemology such that you protect yourself when you navigate the world, right? Because there are people, I mean, look, we just got off the phone with talking about vultures mm -hmm. that are swooping in trying to get people to pay them money for a, a and I'm going to say it right this time, a seance. Yeah, ah! an e-seance, no less. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so, um, and, and that's a, it's a very real thing, right? And so this isn't just exclusive uh, in the domain of religious conversations. This is um, mainly exclusive to the domain of reasoning, right? Uh, how you, you infer, uh, whether you have... A, a good inference or a fallacious inference, it starts to become a lot clearer to you because you can start nav noticing, well, I thought, you know, if this thing, then that thing, wait, that sounds a lot like my Christianity and the way I was thinking prior. You're, you're, it's gonna like almost unfold for you. If you keep you uh, diving into the content, the you're just, it's just gonna fall out where you feel your, your brain just feels like it could navigate the world so much better by itself, not needing anybody else to try to guide you. You're, it's just going to be one, for me at least, when I came out of my spiritual beliefs, it was one of these things where I felt free for the first time. I felt like I could reason, sit down, write things out, and go from A to, to D and not have to like, well, what do you think about this? Like, you know, it wasn't searching for answers. Yeah, it was I could actually second, yeah. reason to answers. So uh, that's where you start. That's mm -hmm. my opinion, Ben. And then there's the I, I mean, several of the things you listed off are absolutely the things that have, like, you've just, like, you essentially listed off the last six months. Like, it was me watching Scientologist. Uh, there's, a, there's a YouTuber, and this gentleman, he's like, I couldn't dis differentiate between Scientology and Christianity anymore. And it's, it's been scary losing those ties to the core of what I thought of who I was. Um, and e I mean, even going to the crypto stuff, that's stuff that I've been consuming to protect myself from it. Like it's, it's <sighs> free is the right, the right word. It's just, yeah, it's word. liberating. Absolutely. It's yeah. Very honestly, audience, can we, can we give a round of applause yeah. for this, this guy? This, this, 
really good. <laughs> really good stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's especially terrifying in Texas. Like, uh, yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not the easiest place to be. And <laughs> Yeah. Um, I've only been here for uh, two days, so I'll find out maybe the more. Yeah, it's, it's I'm, more I'm here. 40 but, minutes from y'all. <laughs> and you didn't it's, come to the studio. Drive, yeah, hey, shame on, on you. Come on. Follow my I example. No idea. Idea. I'm actually gonna try and, I was going to go to a Houston debate with uh, Matt Del Haunty, I think, later in September. Mm-hmm. Well, you come to stop by if, you, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're that close. I mean, yeah. it, we. We love to have you. We have a big audience right here right now, and so we love to have have anybody. If that, you where know, can I, where can I find the information for y'all's next live audience? Uh, I'm so the, glad you asked. Yeah. I literally, I've got to yeah. scroll to it, but I've, I actually have that as one of the announcements today. We did not pay Ben for this for the segue. <laughs> <laughs> not a sponsor. Uh, we do live uh, uh, live shows here uh, the last weekend of every month, um, and oh. so you can come see us here in the studio. Uh, here it is. If you happen to be in the Austin area, September 24th, 2023, uh, for the Bat Cruise weekend, then please consider joining us for the live broadcast of Talk Heathen and the Atheist Experience. Talk Heathen will be hosted by Objectively Dan and Sophia Spina. Uh, and the Atheist Experience will be hosted by Objectively Dan and Jamie the Blind Limey. Uh, doors open at noon, and we hope to see you there. That's the thing that I'm supposed to say later, yeah. but now you get it early. Because you're special. Isn't that nice? <laughs> I and, feel special. <laughs> and it does feed into what I was going to say. There are positive things in religion, in things like community and togetherness and, and a sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. You can find those things elsewhere. These beautiful people are here in this way. And, uh, yeah, whatever you got good out of religion, find a uh, secular alternative and, uh, and go, go for that. You also have the opportunity to, like, quit looking for authority figures to tell you what to think. Because that's that's what religion's really good at, and now you have the awesome opportunity. You know, you know, J. Mike talked about the freedom to reason for yourself. Like, you'll be shocked. You you may be to like realize that you can sit there and de- like deconstruct and pick apart and, and dissect every single thing that you hold dear, every single thing that you. Hold, and it might be overwhelming for a little while, but like you know, if you ask me anything, why is slavery wrong? You won't just get an answer about because it's bad. Like you could have a detailed <laughs> reason for these beliefs, and like, and that works for everything about why science is cool or why, why you know why you have certain moral values. Like, you'll as you go through these thoughts, you'll you'll start to find little threads and little roots and little nerve ends that are still connected to that religion from the past that you can still pop out and put something solid and, and concrete in its place and actually build something upon yourself. So like you're you're at the very beginning of an awesome journey of self uh, self discovery and 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 re-rationalization of everything that you know and and coming into your own as a totally new person and realizing a lot of the coolest things about you aren't because of this but were actually just you all along and taking out all the trauma that was associated with all these issues and just living a fuller, happier, more vibrant and more fun and more loving and more exciting and admittedly more terrifying life as well. Oh, yeah. And that's awesome. <laughs> that's just so much fun, well, I, dude. I don't necessarily know if it's, you know, not like, not even if that, that more terrifying. Like, yeah, the whole thought of hell was added to the Bible later on. That's something I learned last night. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? And now you well, have the darkness to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> I find myself exclaiming what to myself, like, I'm playing video games with this on my other screen with y'all just 24 seven at this point, this last week. Mm. (laughs) And I find myself pausing and going, wait, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And you you may have heard calls where these just antagonistic people calling in and they don't, you know, they just want to say their piece. And and we have a a 10 to 10 pay. People go, why do you bother talking to these people? You are the reason why we talk to these people. Mm-hmm. Your story. I realized Your that. Story. I realized that about eight hours in. I'm glad you mentioned that. Like honestly, like because I, I was banging my head against the wall with that question. Like, why would you entertain this? You can't continue. Like, I'm already like, you can't continue to entertain these people. Yeah. Like, well, at what point is enough enough? But I maybe that's the angry atheist phase starting. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's it is ubiquitous when you realize you've been lied to for that long. No God, be angry. It, yeah, if you, you get pissed off. <laughs> And also, we were talking to, we, we just had the, the, the back cruise yesterday, and we were talking to fans about exactly that. Somebody was asking me about, like, you know, what what's the strategy with different people that you, you talk to when you have somebody who's just terrible and, like, just isn't going to listen to you? 
I'm an educator. I've been doing it for, for like 10 years, going out and doing shows and programs and workshops and classes and all sorts of things. And any time I'm ever on a call, just like any time I'm ever in a classroom, every time I'm giving a lecture, every time I'm doing a show, anything, the questions on my mind are, who am I really talking to? And what's the goal? What am I trying to get out of this? So like in a call like that, I'm not talking to the caller anymore. I may be addressing the caller and using the caller as the tool, but like I have two options. I can either try my damnedest to bring this person in and fail, guarantee fail. Because if somebody tells you that you're not gonna change their mind, you need to believe them and not waste your life on that. Um, <laughs> or I, no, can, I, I, I can risk pushing this person further away and lose nothing, but end up bringing in a lot of other people like you who are already on the fence, who are already starting to question, who are intelligent enough to, 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 to really rationalize through what they're actually thinking. And they might you know, end up freeing themselves from this, this oppressive thing, from the, breaking the chains of this religion. And that's super worth it. And that's, that's the goal. That's part two. The point is to try to make as many people as happy as possible and help as many people free themselves as possible. That's what this whole organization's about. It's a deconstruction center. And so like, well, what you're telling us yeah. here is a success story that makes this all worth it. And it warms all of our hearts. All of our black little atheist hearts <laughs> are so happy right now. <laughs> You know, it, it's it's when I started like aligning my per, like not even aligning my personal beliefs. Like it's like the I'd ask what would Jesus do, and I find myself aligning with the Church of Satan and birth like in rights of people like being able to make decisions on their own body. And it's like wait, like it's like that scene where they're like, wait, are we the bad guys? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> are we the bad like, hold on, <laughs> are yeah. we the baddies? Like, yep. <laughs> and, yeah. The death toll in the, in the associated with hate Old Testament will tell you who's the good guy and the bad guy. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, it feels like evangelical Christianity has just absolutely destroyed any shred of my ability to associate with it anymore, and it, it's awful. I don't blame you. No. I mean, like we we, we yeah. literally. And you it's, said you were raised. You were homeschooled as well. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, you're fine. That's the whole reason I called was because you said you were homeschooled in Christianity. I was like, oh my god, like. <laughs> like I felt so long being one of us say this and to hear that like uh, I, I don't know if any of us were homeschooled in Christianity but I'm sure somebody among us surely was oh I, it must have been the live stream from yeah yeah it was not none of the three of us but like we know people like no, that for sure there are other hosts of the show who have who have, who have been through the conversion who were believers and aren't mm -hmm. and it's because of their interactions with us and other people like us that brought them out of that or place. just reading the damn bible yeah. and seeing how evil it is and how horrible it is I and like that's been trying to disprove y'all all week like i'm like okay like I disagree here, and then I pulled up the other guys talking. I'm like, everyone is saying the exact same nonsense. So then I have the Bible that has all the side by side references, like four of them, and I'm just like, no, yeah, this is nonsense. There's, and you know what? That is such a common story that we hear from people where they say, <laughs> I was, you know, try, uh, uh, trying to prove Christianity yeah. right. I was trying to prove that there was a good argument for God, and the more I looked, the more I realized there isn't one or I was trying to prove evolution isn't true so I started learning about evolution I realized it actually makes a lot of sense not to say that evolution and religion are necessarily competing but in our culture they kind of are um, and you know it's, it's, it's that's that's so common it's like I was homeschooled yeah that's exactly and like I, I have a friend she she is a PhD candidate studying bioanthropology the study of the evolution and biology of human beings she was raised in a Christian household where she wasn't allowed to learn about human evolution and one day she sneaked off off into the pantry with her, her textbook from school and started reading the chapter she wasn't allowed to read and she was like oh shit that that actually works i get it and like that's why they withhold the information from you um i Wait, tell you, the story you all mean, the time. like it went from clay person and mcrib person to, McRib to, <laughs> to to uh oh wow okay this makes sense yeah my favorite oh, is good figure you know when you have somebody say oh you know, life can't you, you can't make life from a rock evolution says we all came from rock well well, what if what if you like grind up those rocks really really small? And of course not. No. Well, what if you got the tiny rocks wet? What if it was wet tiny rocks? No. Okay, then you admit that humans can't come from freaking clay, right? I agree with you. God, it's so frustrating. And every I I there I must have been on like uh, an algorithm break where it was like over and over and over again where they would get backed into a corner and then immediately insult people. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Get their way out of it, and it's just like. Or, or insinuate that you're going to hell forever. And I'm like, yep. okay. And then I found the whole thing that, like, it was added in, like, 
like the 700s that hell was coming or, or whenever it was added to the Bible. That was an after. And it's like, oh, for the, so all that fear and anxiety and all of that my entire life. And that's what I'm feeling this week is the lowering of the anxiety and the fear. Like, well, it's, it's like the concept I mean, of limbo. I, I you know what I mean? There was military and been to war and I am feeling less anxiety from not, from letting this go. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. well, that's like the concept of, of uh, limbo or purgatory or whatever. You used to be believed oh. that non-baptized babies wouldn't go to heaven. They go to this other special place. It wasn't really hell, but it wasn't really heaven either. And, it's like, and then all of a sudden the church came out and was like, yeah. ah, yeah, never mind. Yeah. Surprise. Your we baby's got dead soul has been patched out. They, they yeah, realized the, the white baby void like sounds The white so baby void, yeah, exactly. Just floating baby. Turns out, yeah, sorry, the, the, the new software update came through. Purgatory isn't real anymore. And, like, that was a real concern for thousands of people. And now it's just like, we decided to change the thing you believe. What is that? And you see how insidious this 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 thing is, this this the emotional and, and, and mental control that this has on so many people. At the beginning of the show, I was reading out of this Bible right here. And right here in the front cover, it says, Are you alone, depressed, addicted, stressed, cheated, experiencing conflict or temptation, considering suicide, in need of peace, joy, comfort, purpose, or forgiveness? Read on. They're literally saying to to addicts and to people with suicidal ideation and things like it, this is all you need. This is the medicine. That is so evil to say, don't know, you don't need a psychiatrist. You don't need a therapist. You don't need help. You don't need medication. You don't need to get your life together. You know, no, 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 no. Jesus. It's all give us money. We'll pass the offering plate and you'll feel much better. It is truly, truly horrific. You, and because you were born with sin. Because you were born with sin by the dude who gave you the sin to begin with because he put two people in a garden and told them not to do a wrong thing before they knew Knew what what right and wrong were. You don't know what good and evil is, so don't do evil. What's that? You're evil now, and so now women have hard births and, and you have to be sexually subservient to men. What is that? Yeah. Just Sorry, I didn't, the I, game was rigged from the start. I would so but, also, first of all. but also the sin and evil is necessary for the greater good. Of course. So it's not course, an evil yes. thing because you don't get the good. And that's why you have, because free will, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Free will is what it's all about. Oh. He didn't like the angels praising him. He needed us to choose to praise him. Like, and it's right. like what? Yeah, yeah suck my dick, but do it willingly. <laughs> otherwise, I'll set you on fire. What a great religion. <laughs> Or I'll send you to hell, like, for fuck's sake. Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry, pardon my language. No, it's, it's yeah, how dare you? <laughs> it's, it's it's a madhouse, yo. Um, it's a very strange thing, and uh, it's, it's one of those things that you know, we... We, we hope that, you know, to religious people listening and everything, they understand that like, we, we respect people all day long. Yeah. But I have absolutely no respect for this God or this religion or this book, and I can't see how anybody else would either. And I respect people too much yeah. to respect these beliefs That's because these beliefs are I, horrific. Well, and here's their own circular thought. If I respect God's creation enough and I love it that much, then I want to make sure that it's not harmed on earth. Yes. But yet, all they do is actively try and harm us. And I, I, I think, uh, the, uh, the several. Uh, I think I watched the Stephen A. Fry and I can't remember the other gentleman's name um, debate against the the uh, bishop and the yeah. prime minister. And I mean, even he's deflecting. And I'm like, but wait, what? Like, it doesn't get any higher authority than you. Yep. Yep. So how are you deflecting? Because it's so much easier to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's you really you're, you're it's, it's all lies. That's well, why they that's don't the want thing. To look at the Bible. The, the the religion is built upon the shirking of responsibility. The idea that it doesn't matter how evil you are, it doesn't matter how many people you murder, or rape, or, or torture, or torment. It doesn't matter as, as long as you confess and just confess with your mouth that that Jesus is Lord and you will have eternity in paradise. And Oh, I repented at the very end. Meanwhile, this dude over here that spent his life working hard for charity and making the world a better place but didn't believe the same thing that you believe. Fuck that dude. That dude goes, you know, burns forever. Um... It, the, the idea of the thing is scapegoating. It's 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 passing on the moral onus of of doing the right thing. I if 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 you do something wrong, Ben, in your life, 
I might pay the fine for you. If I really, really like you, I could go to jail for you. I could, I could do any tar- part of taking the punishment for you, but I cannot take away your moral responsibility. I cannot take the burden off of you to go try to make it right. I can't make the wrong into a right by just taking it upon myself. That's not how anything works. That's not how morality works. That's a horrible thing to suggest. And that's what this religion is built upon. It doesn't matter what you do, what kind of person you are. So it's, it's all right. It's all. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's excellent. Like, you got it. Did you obey your commands oh, I'm sorry. today? <laughs> Did you obey your commands today? Exactly. The mafioso version of the good. Well, hey, Ben, we appreciate it. We're going to um, get to some of these <laughs> other callers. Yeah, whoever has the big, you know, big stick, walk it down the street. The, <laughs> obey that one. <laughs> right, but, exactly. But, uh, but thank you, Ben. We, uh, we, really, we really appreciate your time, and hopefully you come down uh, um, uh, for, the, for the live shows at the end of the yeah. month. Most definitely. We hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks for your time, gentlemen. Have right. a wonderful morning. Take care, Ben. Go See on. you later. Yep. What a nice dude. Yes. Uh, before we move on, uh, I have two things. Number one, the ACA wants you to know about what's going on in our community and that we've got an updated website. You can head over to atheist-community.org where you can learn about the organization itself, its policies, and how you can get involved because we're all looking for new people. Um, And also, we want to hear from you. We want to know what things that you do and don't like about these shows. We can make them better all the time. So if you thought something was effective or if you thought that something was really important or you think that we could do something better, then please email us at tv at uh, atheist-community.org and let us know what you think. And the second thing, good news, everyone. I figured out how to work the computer. Yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a couple of other super chats. It turns out I can move this over here. Uh, and we've got uh, Ross Settles, I think, sent $10 to say, thanks, J. Mike. I'm in a similar situation to Chrissy, and your advice really helps. How oh, very kind. Wow, thank you. Um, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> <laughs> 10 pounds from Twinkle Toes. How twinkly are they? Uh, uh, hi, guys. Great show as always. J. Mike, what was your religion, and what was your turning point to becoming an atheist? Oh, you make you make me go back. Um, I didn't have a religion. Um, it was more of a new agey kind of spiritual belief. Uh, I want to say like the new new age kind of stuff. I was, I'm divorced from a lot of the um, crystal clutching kind of stuff that I see. Um, so mine was like a from ex- let's put it this way from experiences that I had uh, that were um, whether altered or not. Um, I had I had developed beliefs that I thought there was more to reality. Um, that we can't really perceive in our, um, I think people today say like 2D minds or 3D minds that mm-hmm. we don't get the 4D plane or whatever. Um, and so I had conversations with some friends about the experiences I had and tried to convince them that we're all connected in this way and I've seen this and their responses back to me humbled me so quick where it was like I had nothing to say. I couldn't like I could tell I was up against like a black belt reasoner <laughs> and I'm just like just throwing everything I can at the wall to the point where I, you know I just I left like f- feeling defeated and it started this kind of process of looking into more I found like um it, it started going more into the religious thing because my buddy was an atheist so he showed me things like uh why doesn't god heal amputees.com and stuff at the time and so all these kind of sites and so I got pushed into those uh, watching a lot of those clips. And when I became an atheist, I actually found the book in the library. The first book I bought is called The Atheist Bible. It's just like a bunch of quotes from um, uh, from just like random celebrities. Oddly enough, Dave Matthews is quoted in that. So I didn't know he was an atheist. But um, And so I started reading that, and then it was just really once I started reading more, reading the Bible itself, then I was like, I think I'm an atheist. I don't think I believe in any of this stuff and the religious stuff. Um, and so that's really kind of how it came for me. It was coming out of a spiritual thing and kind of unfolded into everything else where I was just like, yeah, I think, I don't think uh, Islam is true. Yeah, I don't think Christianity is true either. And then now it's like, I think they're all false through the amount of time that I've spent on it. So, Yeah, yep. right on, man. Uh, then we also have uh, $10 from Rob Nagy. Uh, out of 4,000 religions, denominations, and faith tribes, what makes all other religions not on the upfront debate and discussions like Christianity, Islam, and Mormonism versus all others? I think the biggest thing is the fact that we live in America. Yeah. And we are surrounded by Christianity. I come from Oklahoma. There are double-digit churches within walking distance of my house, and there always have been no matter where I moved. We do have a Hindu temple in my town. We do have a, a, a mosque in my town. We have cathedrals, and we have a Hebrew temple, and we have all... But, like, probably like 99 out of 100 religious institutions in my city 
are evangelical Christian churches. And while the UK is a melting pot, we have state religion. Like, yeah. the, uh, the king is also our religious leader. So we're soaked in it as well. So, you know, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, those things, if, if anybody called in and wanted to talk about whatever tribal religion they believed in, we'd talk about it and we'd, we'd that'd be fine. But 99.9% uh, .9 of the time when we talk to somebody, it's, it's a Christian because that's, those are the people that we live around and that's the major religious oppressive force in our society. So it's what we deal with. Um, if it, this show was we going take on. incoming calls. So yeah, yeah really exactly. We don't, we don't call out. Are, yeah, it's really, we don't knock on doors. That's, that's yeah. really one thing. And then like also if you get on TikTok debates and stuff like that and you, you're talking with people, uh, you will get random different like there's guys i've talked to who have like some ridiculous views on philosophy of mind that is just like not even in the literature that you would read and it's like you got i'll take anything at, at you know of what position i just immediately like but like i'm skeptical of that why don't we have a conversation strong skepticism good logic and reason and a good epistemology is a is a fantastic universal tool set to sort of deal with any of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like be it a Christian or a Zoroastrianism or a, or a Wiccan or whoever, you know. You yeah. Can still say what's. I like. Event. I like. Look. I like talking about the like you know debates within, just well. There's certain debates I don't like within it, but it's it's whatever someone brings me, and it's just I don't I don't even, even maybe I don't know whether I affirm the proposition or not, or I'm just like I don't really know. It's try to convince me that that mm -hmm. is true, and that that might be one of the, or maybe I can you know. I'll take the bird. I'll be on the hot seat. I'll defend naturalism. I, I like that conversation as well. So I'm very willing to defend uh, my naturalism. For sure. For sure. Uh, and then also we have uh, 999 from Jim Barrows. Love Jim Barrows. What a guy. Uh, what kind of underwear do scientists wear? And why is it Kelvin Klein? Uh, wow. Uh, hey, Jim. Um, Celsius and Kelvin both apply for a job. Who gets it? Celsius, because it has the degrees. I hate Audience, both. let I us hate, know what you think both. about our wonderful hate, comedy this time. I hate both of you. Yeah! <laughs> you signed up for it. You heard it. Yeah. You can't unhear it. You're here on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, F's in the chat for, for the, the, the show. <laughs> Um, with that, uh, I think it's time to jump in the next call. What do you think? So, all right. Yeah, we might get into a more heated one here. So we're okay. going with Frank. Um, says atheist. Frank, uh, pronouns are he, him in New York. Says that trans people do not exist and should have no rights. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what a way to start. Frank, you're on Talk Heat. I would how say how... Doing? Oh, uh... Oh, tell me he didn't drop right then. I did not hit drop. There's no way I did. No. I was very, very, very careful to make sure that Frank was brought. Frank, please call back. We yeah, we would. I would yeah. love to talk to you, we Frank. Would, we would love to. Um, let's go with this one. This one might be pretty easy. We might. Have, we all have different or similar, maybe similar positions on this. Um, we're gonna go with seven uh, pronouns are she, her, and Georgia is a weak atheist, but has been told that uh, that only means agnostic, wondering about definitions of terms. Sure. Uh, really easy. Terms are not prescriptive. Uh, they're not like you ought to use it this way. They're descriptive. So what really matters is like what you what you mean by the term, right? Like I can use the label atheist if I mean I uh, don't believe in God, mm -hmm. and someone views that as like agnostic, where I'm not taking an attitude of God existing or God uh, not existing. I'm just kind of in the middle of that those those propositional uh, attitudes that you could have. I don't really care if you call that agnostic or atheist. I'm going to tell you what I, what I mean. It's like, I do not believe in gods. Throw in whatever label you want. Uh, for me, I, I'm okay with that distinction. I think gods do not exist. So I just, when I say I'm an atheist, I say, I believe that gods, plural, do not exist. Um, and that's not a prescriptive usage. There's this debate within philosophy and then like internet atheists. And it, though I don't like this kind of gatekeeping it's like I understand what both sides are saying, but it's not prescriptive, so there is no such gatekeeping. There's a usage in this term, and there's a usage here. And as long as you specify the usages, I don't have any problem with, wow. Well, you could just say, blah, blah, blah. I'm a blah, blah, blah atheist. Like, what do you mean by that? Just tell me what you mean, and we can make progress rather than focusing on the way words mean. Uh, also, hello, Seven. How are you? Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I went on a little rant there, so. What do you think? Hi. Um, yeah, this has been used quite often when talking to uh, believers, pagans, um, even some
somewhat other uh, secularists of sort, um, uh, skeptics in particular. But um, I, I think it's used to pigeonhole a different concept. Um, I've I've seen it used against me to uh, to dwindle my argument of atheism to a, a proclamation of, of, of like um, that I'm missing knowledge in particular by calling it agnostic. Whereas they then go on to suggest, well, you just don't know, so you're just not smart enough yet. And that's been very problematic <laughs> because, like, I, I think that's, first off, like, not useful in the argument, but I also think it's disingenuous. And I'm just trying to find a way around it because it ends up becoming a semantic argument, and I don't want that argument. I wanted to talk with them about their beliefs. Yeah. So, like, there, if you really want to get into the semantics of it, agnosticism and atheism are not mutually exclusive categories. Atheism is simply, I don't believe that there is a God. Theism is simply, I do believe that there is a God. Agnosticism is this position of not being sure, not having the knowledge, not know, and Gnosticism is being sure. So you can be a Gnostic atheist, I know for sure there isn't a God, or you can be an agnostic atheist, I don't believe that there is a God, but I also don't have any evidence in any way. Mm. Um, and same thing with theism, I can be an agnostic theist, I'm pretty sure there's a God, but I, I don't know for sure, I haven't seen any proof, or a Gnostic theist, I know for sure that there is a God. Um, at the end of the day, Agnostic atheism is, in my opinion, the, the only way to do it. Yeah. Um, but like the, the, the example that I usually give is, you know, if I say that there's an elephant behind this wall right here, you have three options. You can say, yes, there for sure is, or no, there for sure is not. Those two things both require evidence. They both require proof. You have to have something to back that up with. You have to check behind the wall. Um, or you can just say, I don't believe you. And if you say I don't believe you, you're not making a truth claim about what's going on behind the wall. You're saying until you give me a reason to believe it, I'm going to suspend my belief. And that's what it really, by and large, atheism is. is It's a suspension of belief. It's not accepting something without evidence. So strictly speaking, you could use the term agnostic atheist, but at the end of the day, the atheist community is not a monolith. It's very diverse. And you're going to find different atheists that disagree with me on these terms and are going to use them totally differently. Yeah, and you're going to find people, people that will use the agnostic. Like you can use atheist as like God does not exist yeah. and then use the preface say agnostic. Look, my position is God does not exist. I don't know that God does not exist. Or uh -huh. and you can say I'm a Gnostic atheist. I know and like my belief is true. Exactly. About it. So yeah. when we use those terms, I'm happy to go. Well, in that case, I'm an agnostic atheist because my belief is that gods do not exist. I can justify the position and th show you why I think it's most likely. But to claim certainty, I don't claim certainty about anything other than my qualitative experience. So yep. I just that. So there, you're right. There's it, just several ways you can dissect it, which is why I'm like, what do you mean? And we, can just, exactly. we make so much more progress because I don't want to gatekeep fucking words. Like yeah. it's just so dumb to me. It sounds to me, Seven, like the people that are arguing with you are looking for a semantic reason to get out of having an yeah. actual discussion. Using yeah, agnostic exactly. as a pejorative, and I've heard and you've seen that technique. And I mean, I call myself an atheist just. As, as a as a diff, as a counter to that, it's like no, I'm an atheist. Yeah, I don't know, mm -hmm. but agnostic does not make me weaker in my position because I'm not making a truth claim. You're not going to bamboozle me out of this position by saying, "Well, you don't know." It's like, well, neither do you actually, if you're honest about it. But if you think you know, please give me some evidence. Right. Thank you. Absolutely. So yeah, no, or or just you know. Mike, you think naturalism is true? I'll defend it. Great. You know, it's like whoever is whoever takes the burden is just. Who's making that claim? And I don't see why that we have to navigate through a bunch of language in order to go, look, you think this is true? Either give me proof or raise the probability that it's true, <laughs> you know, like, or yeah. whatever. So, Seven, that's almost six solid minutes of words and what they mean. Uh, does this help you at all? <laughs> <clears throat> well, it does give me a follow-up question, um, if I can ask it. By all means. Um, so, Gnosticism would be to knowledge. Agnosticism would be the lack of knowledge. Um, in, in just generalities, but um, shouldn't there be like a third subsect or wouldn't there be a further definition required for a person? So if, if there's a person who there's a let, let's talk about the bulk of knowledge available as well as the bulk of knowledge that is possible. Right. One is one we know. One is one that we are still figuring out um, of those knowledge sets. Um, if I'm Gnostic with the one that we know of, right, like all of the claims that have come to me regarding this God claim have been 
funneled through logical reasoning, give their evidentiary uh, claims have been tested and peer reviewed, and it has been lacking through that. Like, what would that be called? Because it's not saying that you know that everything about that. Well, are you, are you packing in certainty whole, with knowledge? Well, not just uncertainty with it, but I guess the claim becomes from the opposer that, well, you just haven't learned something that you will eventually learn that will make you a believer. And I think that's it, disingenuous because because of the subset of all the claims that have been like presented to me over the course of now 20 years uh, trying to defend Christianity and other religions in particular, um, they haven't been valid. They haven't been useful. And I, that's like, what word would that be? Because it's not Gnosticism, because I'm not suggesting well, that I... Well, it's going to depend on your notion of knowledge, because like some people are f in, like fallibilists where you don't need certainty on justification. So it's like, re doesn't require any notion about certainty. And there's somewhere you have to have certainty. I think that mistake is made. I think this mistake is made by a lot of theists and atheists. This is just my position, so don't throw tomatoes at me. <laughs> Certainty doesn't have anything to do with knowledge. That's like a psychological state that you have. Like I can have knowledge that I ate breakfast and not be like totally certain yeah. that I that I did. I don't. At least that my type. The way that I define knowledge isn't isn't concerned with like certainty in any way. It's it's concerned with justifying the belief or raising that the the likelihood that that belief is true rather than not. Um, you know, if we can. If we can assess that in such a way so it's going to be real it's going to depend because you might have people who are like in order to have knowledge you have to have justification which is certain i think that's garbage uh because um then i have to know that i know and then know that i know that i know and, and then you i don't solipsism yeah and, and i just deny what's called the kk principle yeah. that you have to know what you know so a lot of this it, it matters on how you're defining knowledge in other terms which is why i think that the whole thing is kind of fucked from the beginning that yeah you can have all these right. ways to do it but it's not prescriptive in the first place, and you can avoid this by like, hey, this is just what I mean. Don't put me in a fucking box. <laughs> Did you not get enough of what I said? Did you not understand my position? And if that's not the case, I don't even think you should interact with that person. Yeah. I can be very clear to tell you, I think that there are nothing but natural causes in the universe. That's my position. Do you want to fight about it? <laughs> like, I don't know what, you do. what do you want to do? You want to argue that I'm not an actual atheist? Not interested in that conversation. And if their own response is, well, you just don't know yet. It's like, okay, if you want to keep smelling your farts, you can do so over there, and this conversation but is over. What do you actually yeah. know? And can yeah. you prove it? Do you know for sure this God is real? Can you back that up as much as you want to try to have me back up that I don't believe it? Like, what, what is that? Unfortunately, Seven, this is a deeply philosophical topic. And uh, you'll get into the weeds and, like, different layers of ism and like how these old things and you'll make out. no progress from from what you thought you yeah if you want to get into that I, this is your dude for it over here though j mike that is his specialty i'll say it this way analytic yeah, philosophy has failed miserably at defining terms like knowledge so so but okay well this has been uh, helpful thank you j mike thank you okay oh uh forrest sorry <laughs> you can call me my last name it's cool I, i'm just this dude <laughs> It's, it's funny because the entire like kind of pursuit of analytic philosophy um, is kind of like analyzing words, what we mean by them, the concepts. And um, Graham Oppie makes this really good point. He's like, look, <laughs> analytic philosophy, and he's an analytic philosopher. Like, analytic philosophy has failed to define things like art, mm -hmm. you know, like what, what is good, mm -hmm. <laughs> what is knowledge. Yeah. What is beauty. But it doesn't <laughs> follow that like we aren't tracking those concepts because we can't like put the, you know, there's this floating, there's the floating definition, that's knowledge, grab it real quick. Right. Um, it's, it's kind of like this mirage, I think, that a lot of people in analytic philosophy get, get into where um, we're, there isn't this settled dispute. We, you know, we, you get three philosophers in a room, they probably won't even agree there's three philosophers in the room. <laughs> and so we don't have, we don't have this settled dispute. And, but I know that when we, Okay, what do you mean by that term? The terms that you're going to use to describe that are going to fall back into our like normal usage of talking, where I'm, there's not as much ambiguity, yeah. and I think you can make a lot of progress there. Uh, unless you want to really get into the weeds, then sure, then you have to play the language it, game. It sounds to me like a creationist arguing with me about evolution. Well, what about microevolution versus macroevolution yeah. versus all the... Or a change of kinds. It's like, oh all right, bro. <laughs> yeah. The labels that we, I, yeah, we stick Hiding on. behind attempting prescriptive language because that is the only recourse you've got. You've got yeah. nothing else. Exactly. It's, it's, it's just a coward's way out. Speaking of coward's way out, uh, Frank the transphobe still hasn't called back. So we'll hopefully hear from that guy someday <laughs> soon. Um, 
I've got all sorts of resources right here to educate you, sir. Um, uh, top five patrons, by the way, on Patreon this week. Uh, we've got Dingleberry Jackson, great name. Um, we've got Dion Lachey, who's a new patron. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we've got Oops, All Singularity. Uh, we've got uh, Davor Valjin, probably saying that wrong. I'm so sorry, and I'm definitely going to say this wrong. Uh, Kalevi Helvedi, I'm, I'm assuming. I don't know. And honorable mention in sixth place is Bethany P. Try harder, Bethany. Um, <laughs> those are our patrons, our top five patrons patrons for this, uh, this week, you can join our Patreon and become one of those people by going to tiny.cc slash Patreon Patreon TH. Isn't that a cool thing you can do? Um, I think we have time for like one more or so. What do you think? Yeah, I want to give you one, Forrest. Oh, um, snap. Because I haven't talked enough. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, we love you here, so it's, oh. not, it's we're not we're not mad. I don't think the audience would, would He's okay, steady. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, we're going to go to uh, I have something I do want to add to this, so I will take a little bit, but I want you, you know, you start. Well, but I asked one thing. You probably, you'll probably just fucking say it, and it'll, they'll ruin my spotlight. <laughs> I know one thing, <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna go to Ed in Alabama. Um, uh, creationist claiming evolution hasn't been observed. I think that this would be. One is Ed the creationist claiming this? Or no, he? he's a, he's an atheist. I think he just wants to discuss. Uh, okay, cool. Let's, let's, Ed, you tell us. Hey, what's going on, Ed? <laughs> hey, hello. Um, yeah, so um, uh, last for the last week, I've been watching a bunch of uh, evolution versus creation debates. And while I've learned a lot from these debates, I've also learned about how these creations can have these tactics to counter-argue against evolution. So that's why I present to myself um, five common, maybe common or many less, I don't know, lies from creationists in evolution debates. So... The first one I can talk about is uh, these creationists say this current kind of animal will always produce the same current kind of animal. Yeah. I have a problem with this. Um, they're, they're, they're focusing on the present, you know? They're focusing on the now. And what well, they don't realize that for evolution to work, it takes uh, generations of you know, millions of years of time. <laughs> Unless like, polyploidy, which is what I wanted to mention, direct speciation where you can't interbreed with the parent species. Am I right or am I wrong? None of that made sense. Polyploidy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Poly, polyploidy. So polyploidy, the parent offspring, or I'm sorry, the offspring cannot uh, reproduce with the parent species, right? You might be, okay, let me double check. Poly, make sure that but, I, I get what you're saying. Polyploidy. I just want to make sure that you... <laughs> I swear I, I'm smart in some <laughs> sense on the biology. I swear. I've read a book or two. Okay, I get where you're coming from. Yes! Because polyploidy is a condition of <laughs> possessing more than two sets of chromosomes. Um, and what you're talking about is, is when you like talk flatworms about... flatworms like, and... Yeah, well, it's uh, what you talk about. Like, we're, we're, we, uh, we're a polyploid. We're a diploid. So we have two sets of our chromosomes. And so, like, I... What you're saying is like when the offspring accidentally has an extra set, and therefore they can't reproduce. There is that what you're saying? Yeah, there'd be a, okay. The, the yeah, that, that works. Yeah, which would that be, works. Which would be direct, which were, would be direct speciation, right? I, it, uh, strictly speaking, yeah, you could you could argue with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying that that polyploidy was speciation, and that it wasn't. That no, this is a mechanism by which for, speciation can happen. For fuck's sake, I was hoping you'd say yes because I've been rendering this argument. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, it it works. It works. I'm, I I didn't know what you were trying to say. <laughs> I get you. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a, uh, you know, the philosopher stuff that gets in the way. I'm yeah. gonna go with no, that. No, okay, that's, 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 I, I, I get, I get what you mean now, because I, I double checking like, am I? Did it, maybe I misremember. I didn't remember what this word. I actually, knew something maybe, Forrest didn't maybe know. I, maybe I, maybe yes. I, okay, so, so a great example of that then in that case, because I, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of what you're trying to say here. Okay, so you're saying that a, a parent produces offspring. The offspring has an abnormal, a different number of chromosomes because of a, a non disjunction event probably, and then they're, they then can't reproduce their parents. So therefore, you have direct speciation event. Um, yeah. That would have to happen in a, a, a few times so that you have, you know, males and females to continue breeding or in an asexual species it would be pretty pretty functional pretty quickly. Um, but that asexual species would also have to be at least diploid. But sure, yeah, that, that, yeah, that can happen. Um, a good example of that is... So I'm, I'm in, right. Yeah, okay, cool. You're pretty right. You're pretty right. Yes. Yes. I, I, can, I can vibe. I can, I'm smelling what you're stepping in. It, <laughs> it makes sense. Um, a good example of that would be in this part of the country, we have uh, uh, tree frogs. We have little gray tree frogs out here that make cool sounds. Um, and there's actually two species of them. Um, there's there's just one that's called a little gray tree frog and one's called like 
Grant's tree frog, some, some dude's name's tree frog, um, and they are what we call a cryptic species, um, which means between the two of them, you can't tell the difference by looking at them. Um, there's uh, The only way you can tell the difference by them is, number one, they have different songs, and number two, one of them has twice as many chromosomes as the other because of that event. Okay. There was a, a, a chromosomal non-disjunction in the entire genome somehow or down the line in a parent you know, of, of a descendant of these species just one of them didn't separate and you have twice as many chromosomes um and that's not unheard of at all in the animal kingdom there's some animals where that's like that is the way sexual differentiation happens is is like the the males are all haploid and the females are all diploid ants are this way um so like yeah yeah you could totally say that that's a speciation right. event for sure um if it happens okay. like big enough broad enough and in enough times in the right species at the right well, time. And, and plants, it presumably happens a lot, right? Well, well yeah, you have different, because, like, you know, wheat is hexaploid. It's got six copies of its freaking chromosomes. Which, so like which you, wheat are you talking about? Which what? Which wheat. 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 Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, like, that, that yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, that totally works. That makes sense. Great argument, J. Mike. Thank you so much for bringing that up and educating us all. <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah, uh, God, that could have gone so fucking terrible <laughs> for me. <laughs> I had no idea what you meant. Um, uh, the the uh, uh, but the argument that you know between kinds um, that there's no evolution between kinds. First of all, you know, I dare any creationist to tell me what the fuck a kind is. Um, I I remember the species. taxonomic hierarchy. You know, it's a domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Kind isn't in there, right? Yeah. Um, and generally speaking, when you talk to them, they say, "Oh, well, there's like the elephant kind and the tiger kind and the the the, the, the dog kind, it's like, the creeping and it, kind." And it, yeah, <laughs> what we were reading one of these King James Bibles earlier is uh, creeping, flying things. What is that? <laughs> um, but like the the term kind varies somewhere between genus and order. Somewhere in there is where kinds are, um, and it always varies to fit their purposes. Um, but no matter how you slice it, there's plenty of examples of of changes between kinds, so to speak. Um, the f most famous ones being Archaeopteryx, which is has traits of a reptile and traits of a bird. It's a transitional form between these two. Uh, or Tiktaalik, which is a fish that was uh, the first tetrapod able to push itself out of the water and crawl up on land and give rise to other species like you know you have uh, Ichthyostega and the like down the line. Um, so like no, the the fossil record is abundant. With 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 you know uh, different kinds or, or or whatever it is, and we have all sorts of those. But what's really important to remember is that like every single thing that's alive today is as evolved as everything else. Everything is a transitional form. Um, and if you were, say for example, you know, what I usually give as an example is if you had my skeleton and my parents' skeletons and their parents' skeletons and their parents' skeletons going back for millions of years, go all the way back to you know the, either the early Homo or back through the Australopithecines, go back seven to nine million years to our common ancestor with chimpanzees, it doesn't matter. There's not a single place on that line of skeletons that you can point and say, okay, that's a human and everything else before it isn't. This is where the humans start. You can't do that because evolution is a gradient, not a ladder. It doesn't work that way. Um, it's not levels in a video game? Yeah, it turns out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why I freaking hate, if you've seen that, uh, it's called the March of Progress. It was this diagram produced by uh, Rudolf Zallinger to, for Time Magazine. Um, and it's this little monkey that like levels up into a chimpanzee and then into a, a homo erectus and then into a human. Like, a Charizard, eventually. <laughs> <a> Charizard. <laughs> There's... That is such, like, to, to say that's an oversimplification is an oversimplification. Like, saying that that's how evolution works is like saying that the Civil War was a disagreement. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such BS. And so many people look at that and they're like, well, I never saw a chimpanzee give birth to a human. It's like, yeah, neither fucking have I. No, I'm, nobody's I've never that. watched uh, God uh, make non-gods non before. So there you go, like, yeah. Like, and the thing, argument. the thing that always gets me with creationist arguments is like, yeah, let's just say you've proven evolution is bunk. Mm -hmm. That gives you not one step closer to proving that God did it. Exactly. Because X equals zero is not the same thing as Y equals one. Just because you can disprove evolution, which you, you can't. can't. <laughs> but even if you could, you haven't done a single thing. You still have all your work cut out for you. Um, so, yeah, if you have any other specific creationist arguments, I'd love to talk about them. But uh, I, I, I probably have heard them before and they're, they're all silly. Yeah, Ed, if you want to add anything else. Um, um, right. Um, well, I also have this uh, other lie um, 
where it kind of leads to something very different. So they do, they do say, well, yeah, it is a common, yeah, it is a very common line that creations have claimed that they've never observed evolution, but this leads me to something different. This leads, the creation has led into some sort of circular reasoning where every time the creation say it has never been observed, the scientists who say, oh, yes, we do have evidence, we do. And then the creationists deny, and then the, and the scientists will point out, but you cannot deny it. The evidence right there. Don't be, don't be ignorant. And then here's where it starts. The, the creationists will accuse the scientists of putting in ad hominem attacks. And thus returning back to the statement that because you gave me this ad hominem attack, you never give me proof. I still have, I still stand. I, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that last one. I don't know the, the, the ad homs. I mean, like, obviously people will, but. Yeah, but I feel I, like a lot of people don't know what an ad hominem is. It's like, I'm, yeah. it, it would be an ad hominem attack for me to say, you are stupid, therefore you're wrong. I'm not saying that creationism or is stupid, therefore it's wrong. I'm saying it is stupid and wrong. Yeah, and like that's I'm just very, straight up thing. insulting it. <laughs> yes. I'm not. I'm not an ad hom if I just straight insult it. Right. It's like that's that's the thing about you know creationism is is it it isn't even a theory. It's just a a dogmatic rejection of of the evidence and and of the conclusions that we were able to draw from it, and then the deliberate shoehorning in of religion. Um, and they use words like intelligent design or creationism to try to get around the fact that it is just actually religion. Or they'll try to call what we do religion, that we believe in Scientism. evolution. Scientism. Scientism, yeah, exactly. Look at the DI and say they, they changed from uh, the creationism, like, like a little motto thing that they had, mm -hmm. and just replaced like creationism with intelligent design. As yes. If it's like changed yeah. anything. Because it sounds more scientific yeah, if you don't know what science is. And like that's that whole thing is is just to try to obfuscate what they're actually talking about which is just religion i have a book that says god did it therefore that's how it is mm -hmm. and the arguments always boil down to well i can't i it's you know say we don't have any transitional species in the fossil record say we've never seen a fossil at all you don't then get to say i don't know therefore magic mm -hmm. that isn't how science works ever oh fuck it isn't how science works ever especially not when you're trying to actually you know debunk the glue that holds all of biology together nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution that's what theodosius dosansky said um and so without that knowledge without our understanding of how species evolve we don't know anything evolution is biology becomes this 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 pile of random factoids that mean nothing when put together. But with evolution, those facts weave together into a magnificent tapestry that makes up everything that we know, not only about ourselves, but about agriculture and medicine. The fact that you are alive today in a society like we have is because of our understanding of evolution. The fact that you get a flu shot that's different every year is because of our understanding of evolution. The fact that you take antibiotics the way that you do is because of our understanding of evolution. The fact that when you go to the grocery store, you can buy apples the size of your freaking hand and not tiny weird little berry things is because of our understanding of evolution. And what's freaking crazy to think about is the fact that we've been utilizing evolution before we even knew what it was. Back in the, it, it talks about in the Bible, it talks about shit that you can trace back to actual evolutionary theory. Aristotle talked about actual evolutionary theory. And just because of the course of the past, arguably six, or, or, you know, four, eh, 400, but really especially 200 years, we've been really digging into this understanding of like how species change and like where things come from and tearing apart these old hierarchical models of, of, of biology. It has no bearing on the fact that right now we can see evolution with our own eyes, both in the laboratory and in the field. Mm -hmm. And every single line of evidence from embryology to homology to genetics to polyploidy. To, to polyploidy, <laughs> right? It's all of these things all point in the exact same direction. And that's how science works. It's not a dogmatic thing. If we were to find a single piece of evidence that went against evolution, we would either change the evolutionary model or throw it out entirely. Mm. But it just so happens that every time we find something that looks a little bit weird, we look a little closer at it, and sure enough, there's freaking evolution at work all the time. Mm. And what's most important, and I'll, I promise I'll shut up after this, what's most important is that evolution is the logical conclusion of the most basic axioms of of heredity, inheritance, just biology in general. If you understand that 
DNA exists, that genes are heritable, passed on from parent to offspring, and that they come in different flavors, which we happen to call alleles. There's not just one eye color. There's not just one hair color. There's not just one height. There's not just one skin color. There's not just one kind of limb, right? Because these genes come in different flavors, then it logically follows that different flavors of genes, different alleles, would be better suited for life in different environments. You can have all the best genes to be the perfect freaking penguin, and you're going to die in the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> and the best, most magnificently, elegantly, perfectly designed boa constrictor is going to die in Antarctica, because it doesn't have the right alleles to survive there. The only difference between any two living things is their DNA. And so if, if, if you're honestly going to say that we understand all this stuff about life, but life doesn't evolve, you're just not taking what we know about life to its logical conclusion, which is evolution. And that goes back to the, the potential for the saying, oh, you're using ad hominem. You're not. By saying you are willfully ignoring evolutionary evidence, mm -hmm. it is a willful ignorance. And that's, a, that's an attack on their idea, not the person. I think. Yeah. And they go, oh, it's an ad hominem attack. It's like, well, then read the books and give me actual refutations if you can, but you can't. Yeah. It's, it's, it's deeply frustrating. Anyway, uh, I hope that answers your questions, Ed. I hope that the, us, us ranting and raving, I say us, I hope me ranting and raving about this like a lunatic while these two people are calm and passionate about it. <laughs> I hope that helps. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's fine. Well, thank you, Ed. We're going to close up the show here. We appreciate you calling. And, uh... Hold on. Sorry? Go ahead. I have to say. It's a little very, very quick. Sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, finally, I finally left uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Ever since I was a kid, I was astounded by dinosaurs. But ever since my parents have taught me about uh, God and Christ and Jehovah Witnesses and stuff, I didn't get it because it doesn't match with the story of dinosaurs and all that stuff. So I have... Uh, so it took me this late for me to say that um, I finally left the community for good. Congratulations. Awesome. And again, you're the reason we do what we do. Yep. Seriously. Thanks so much for being here, Ed. Congratulations on your deconstruction. That's awesome. Happy you're free, man. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Have a good one. Uh, I'm okay. Sorry. I, I always hit the, almost hit the wrong button. We did it. We, need we did it. <laughs> AXP theists. Call in. We want a lot of theists for AXP. For sure. A lot of theists. Uh, to the last pe uh, people on the line, I'm so sorry we were running out of time. We weren't able to do it. Um, really quickly, a couple of things before our, we, we end the show, though. Uh, number one, have you ever said to yourself, I really love the content that the ACA creates, but I wish that there was a way for me to see it all the time forever. Well, now you can. We've got you covered. We have a 24-hour live stream. And then on top of that, another 24-hour live stream. Two 24-hour live streams. That's 20, it's, it's 48 hours a day. You can watch the things. Um, we uh, AXP TV delivers constant stream of uh, shows, clips, and specials over the 26 seasons of the Atheist Experience. And now Talk Heathen TV as well provides you with clips from Talk Heathen. You can watch or just listen to your favorite hosts. Uh, and they deliver some of your, the, the weird things that we've said over the years. You can discover new hosts you've never even heard of and new clips that you've never seen before. Um, you can go to tiny.cc slash AXBTV or tiny.cc slash HeathenTV to join in the fun. Um, a quick reminder for everybody out there, the prompt for this week is what biblical advice will get you erected? Uh, erected? <laughs> what biblical advice will get you arrested? Uh, leave your answers down in the chat. Tell us what will get you erected as well. It will be great. Um, <laughs> Joe did it. Right? Joe did it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Become a channel Sorry, member. Awesome. Click the join button. Join our Patreon. And if you want to really have some fun, come down here on the last uh, uh, weekend of the month and see us live, just like all these good people did. Look at our amazing audience. Aren't they so sweet? Oh, I love them all. Mm. Also... Uh, really quickly, because we never got that guy to call back in, I just want to take a quick second to read this. This is uh, from the World Health Organization's page on gender and health. This I'm just going to read briefly directly from this page. Uh, gender refers to the characteristics of women, men, girls, and boys that are socially constructed. This includes norms, behaviors, and roles associated with being a woman, a man, a girl, or a boy, as well as relationships with each other. As a social construct, gender varies from society to society and can change over time. 
time. Gender interacts with but is different from sex, which refers to the different biological and physiological characteristics of females, males, and intersex persons, such as chromosomes, hormones, and reproductive organs. Gender and sex are related but are different from gender identity. Gender identity refers to a person's deeply felt internal and individual experience of gender, which may or may not correspond with the person's physiology or design sex or designated sex at birth. So, Frank, is the World Health Organization wrong or are you wrong? Call us back and talk about it. I'd love to hear from you. And with that, it is time to wrap up the show. To our viewers, feel free to, to, to call in anytime. Feel free to interact with us anytime. Send us an email. Talk to us. We'd love to hear from you always. Uh, we do have this thing going on. Do this. Do this with me. Oh, yeah. Yes, we have it's been this a while since I've been on talk. <laughs> Gross. Love. There they go, the love Take rings. Take on love. Uh, remember, uh, whether you believe or not, uh, uh, we, we would love to hear from you. Uh, and if you do believe, we don't hate you. We're, We're just not convinced. convinced. Goodbye. What a weird, weird outfit. We want the truth, so watch Truth Wanted live Friday at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTTW and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call TW.